What's up YouTube? I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time now, but I really wanted to make sure that I covered all the important points and didn't really miss anything. So this video is going to be about breast implants, breast augmentation. If you're thinking about getting your boobs done, if you're thinking about it for someone else, if you want to have them redone, if you've already had them done and want them redone, if you want to do something different with them, or if you're just curious about my experience and why I did it, the big thing that I've noticed more recently since I've been posting a lot of videos on YouTube and on Instagram regarding fitness, obviously, people have been questioning, you know, why would you do that to yourself? Why would you have breast augmentation? Um, why wouldn't you just be natural? So I'm gonna answer those questions today. So let's get started. When did I do this for the first time? Now I've had my breasts done twice. I did this for the first time, it'll be 11 years in September. I did it right before I got married, about, about six months before I got married. My big issue with my body was, because I wasn't super unhappy with myself, it was more I could tell when I got dressed up to go out that I was you know, bottom heavy and on top I was missing something. So what I really wanted to do was balance. So when I first got my, my breasts done, um, I went to a full C, which isn't obnoxiously big. I was barely an A when I first had them done and I went to a full C. Um, they looked full. They look like they fit my body. I have said this before, I was a soccer player growing up. So I had a butt and I had thighs, so I really just needed balance. And that's what I did. It, I mean, from the moment I left surgery, I felt like it was a good decision. Um, there are some people that I'm sure aren't 100% happy. Some people wish they went bigger, and that's what they always say. The doctors will always tell you that everybody wishes they went bigger. Um, I think there are some people that wish they went smaller, but... For me, when I was done, I definitely wish I had gone bigger. I liked them. I felt really good when I got them done. They boosted my self-confidence. I felt like I filled out my clothes better. I got them done in September and in November, my best friend got married and I was her maid of honor. And my biggest concern getting them done was will I fit into my bridesmaid dress that I already ordered. I was already fitted. They, they filled out the dress. The dress looked amazing. It was one of those things where I looked at her and I said, well, you're welcome, because now I look like I actually fit into my bridesmaid dress as opposed to having to get it taken in like every other dress I've ever worn. I always needed to buy the bigger size because I had a big waist and always had to get the top taken in. So it was no longer an issue. I was balanced. I looked like a normal, what I felt was a normal, like a normal woman. So the reason I got them done was for balance. That was the, the, the first time. When I got them done for the first time, my sister also got hers done. And the big question was, do you want saline or do you want silicone? Well, I was 21 at the time. Um, 22? I think I was 21 when I was discussing it and 22 when I actually got them done. And my sister was 19. That puts her at about 19 years old. She wasn't allowed to get saline. I'm sorry, she wasn't allowed to get silicone. She was allowed to get saline. Because I was 22, I was allowed to get saline or silicone. My concern was, why am I allowed to go with silicone just because there's a two-year age difference? You know, once, yeah, once you were 21, you were allowed to get silicone. It didn't make sense, and it, I didn't feel safe with silicone at the time, so I went with saline. Number two, saline was cheaper. And number three, I went under the muscle, so going with saline, you really didn't feel to the touch. You didn't really feel that there was that much of a difference between real to fake. Now, going to silicone in my second time, we'll get into that later. There's a very big difference between silicone and saline. But at the time, I was completely satisfied with going under the muscle and going with saline. It was, to me, safer because why would one age be able to get it and one not? and it, it was less expensive. Um, now, moving forward, my CCs. So like I said, I went to a full C and I was a very small A cup when I got them done. So I did, I believe it was 420 CCs of saline to fill the implant. 
my, I'll never forget my last words going under anesthesia was to fill it up. When you have saline, the implant itself can fill up from X to Y to Z. You have, um, you have room when you're filling up the implant where if you get silicone, they purchase the implant and it is at full size when they put it into your body. The saline, you have flexibility. They put the implant in and then they fill it up when it's already inside your, your, the breast pocket. So I knew what I originally wanted and we had discussed it and I was gonna be a little under 400 cc's and right as I was going under, I was like, fill them up, just fill them up. I had, I thought about it long and hard and I just told them to fill them up. So I was happy that I did because I did get the full C. I might have been, you know, small to medium C otherwise. And I was really, really, really happy with the way that the procedure had turned out. And honestly, 22 years old, I was so young. It was the best decision of my life at that point. It, it just changed things for me. It, it gave me so much confidence and I absolutely loved the decision. So 420 cc's gave me a full C. My incision. Sorry, that's the dog. So my incision. I, for both procedures, again, we'll get into the second procedure later. For both procedures, we went under the muscle. I'm sorry, we went under the breast. Um, my concern was I was only 22 and I did want to have the ability to breastfeed when I had my daughter. And the doctor said that that would be my best option in the future to be able to breastfeed. So we didn't touch the nipple. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. Michael. I had no problems breastfeeding. Um, she, I breastfed Kylie until she was nine months old. So non-issue, if that's something that you are concerned with as far as waiting till after children, um, getting it done young, I definitely felt like I really enjoyed having my boobs done and going on vacation and celebrating life as it you know, young adult, it was a lot of fun. But we went under the muscle, I'm sorry, under the breast. And the big thing with that is every so often you get a little bit under boob. You can't pretend like it doesn't exist. Whether you're wearing a sports bra and you're doing fitness or in a bathing suit and you lift your arms up, whatever, you're gonna have a little bit of under boob show. And if you take care of your incision properly and do what the doctor says, you won't have an issue with scarring. I had zero issues to the point where when I went in for my second surgery, the doctor couldn't even see where the incision was. That's how awesome my incision healed. Yes, you're with a plastic surgeon, so the incision should heal to virtually nothing. But if you don't do your job and you don't take care of your incision, you're going to have an issue. I've seen people with an issue and say that um, that the incision site is red, or you could see you could see scarring or what have you. I have none. Even my second surgery, I still have no scarring. It's it's cool. I mean, yeah, everybody knows I had my boobs done, so you can't say like, oh, I wonder if like, okay, Kristen had her boobs done. But as far as seeing um, how or where or you know any kind of scarring, there's nothing there. So what I thought was kind of interesting, we didn't use the vitamin E ointment or any kind of, um, oh, I can't think of what they're called, like any of those creams and lotions that you would use for scarring. What we used was, it was called silicone strips. And um, when I got out of the shower, I put a new silicone strip over the incision and I would massage it. And over time, the, the incision was gone it has like a little bit of an adhesive so it does stick to the incision it's not an ointment so to me it didn't make a lot of sense but he's the professional so I trusted him and after my first procedure and seeing that I had zero scar the second time around I trusted him too and I still have no scar and it's they're definitely more fresh now than they were you know when I had them redone and there's no scar even to this day which is pretty cool I'm definitely happy with that I think the big question that a lot of people wonder is, do I go over the muscle or under the muscle? Like I said, my first procedure, I went oh, under the muscle and I did saline. The second time around was after my daughter was born. I had been into CrossFit for two years 
and I decided that I was not getting them redone unless I went over the muscle. Purely for aesthetics, the big issue was, and we'll show some photos, when I would do a muscle up or a push up or anything where my pecs were engaged, the implant would go underneath my arms. So my muscles, my pec muscles, my pectoral muscles were so built up, I'm not gonna say overbuilt, they're built because I'm an athlete, that they would literally push the implant down and out. And when I looked at photos, it was embarrassing to see that. It, they just, they look distorted. And I went from having all this confidence and loving my breasts to, oh my goodness, this looks awful. Like, don't take pictures if I'm doing a muscle up. Like, please, just don't. I hated it. So when Kylie was done nursing and I had qualified for regionals in 2014, and had a couple of competitions after that that were lined up. I decided to have them redone. She was she was two, so I didn't have to deal with picking her up as much, and you know that was a non-issue because you cannot lift anything heavy, and I think more than a gallon of milk even right after you have them done. Getting them put from under to over is a more extensive process. It's I'm not gonna bore you with the gory details but you do have to drain fluid and stuff and it's not it's not fun it's not pretty it's kind of medically gross but it's something that did have to happen so if you are crossfitting and you're a high level athlete or even just a high level athlete in general I would recommend going above the muscle the doctor didn't want to do it he wanted to go under the muscle because after all it gives you a more natural look and everybody wants a more natural look and blah 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 well, you know what? The next time I went into surgery, I said that I wanted big, fake boobs. I wanted you to see that they were big, fake boobs. So that's what we went with. I wasn't bashful about the size. I went to, again, I went silicone the second time around. It feels more natural. It's, I, I love it. Um, when I do a muscle up or a push up or anything pec related, they sit where they're supposed to sit. They don't move. My pecs are underneath them, so I <laughs> I can't even make them move by moving my pec muscles. So to me, that's exactly what I wanted to achieve, and that is what I got. I have you you can tell that they're fake at this point. You can tell that they're fake, and I'm okay with that. They. To, in my opinion, this was the best option for me in my fitness career. When I'm in a bikini, I you don't see my pec muscles because to me that sometimes it looks it makes me look hard. It would make me look hard, and I think that there's a certain femininity to looking a little bit softer, and I think that my breasts help me do that. So that's the over the muscle to under the muscle healing. It was, I think, easier to heal going over the muscle because your muscle is basically unaffected by the procedure. Where when you go under the muscle, they do have to lift the muscle to put the implant in. This, it's sitting on top. I'm not saying that your recovery is much faster, but I'm saying that as far as getting back into fitness afterwards, it didn't hurt as bad. There's a lot of humbling aspects to getting back into fitness, especially CrossFit after having your breasts done. So getting back into training. Now, I've had them done twice. The first time, I basically was a runner, so I just had to wait a little bit. I would bike, no big deal. I didn't really do the gym scene while I was getting ready to get married, other than a couple bicep curls here or there. I really wasn't a fitness fanatic at that point, if you will. But after my second procedure, going from being a regionals level athlete to having my boobs done, talk about taking you out of the game. It, it definitely crushed me mentally and I think the biggest issue that I had was that the doctor, and I don't think that there are many doctors that even get it, but the doctor when I kept saying that, you know, when can I go back, when can I go back? And he would say, we could do, you know, light stuff, moderate stuff, no bouncing. And I'm like, you don't understand. I want to pick up a barbell and throw it over my head. And he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> see, at one point he told me I could go 100%. And when I told him that that was what 100% meant to me, 
he was like, oh, hell no. Like, he had no idea what CrossFit was. So, if I can give you any advice, it's either find a doctor that gets fitness in its fullest as to, like, what you do. If you're a CrossFitter, obviously someone that maybe understands CrossFit. Or, you know, if you're a bodybuilder, someone that understands bodybuilding and what you're going to put yourself through. Because when they tell you 100%, 100% to me is very different from telling a bodybuilder to go 100%. I'm not getting on a Stairmaster. I'm not um, bench pressing regularly. I'm not doing curls. Like, I am doing plyometrics. I am doing muscle-ups and chest bars and snatches and log clean and press now in my strongman category. There's so much more when you're told that you can go 100% compared to, you know, an average Joe going 100%. You know, going for a jog is much different than snatching. So make sure, number one, make sure that your doctor is on the same page or you do your homework and make sure that you find out when you can go back. Number two, when they start to tell you that you can go back, if something doesn't feel good, stop. Because there's nothing worse than spending anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars on your boobs to screw them up in the first couple weeks to a month. There's nothing worse than wasting your money. So number two, if it hurts, stop. There are other things that you can do. You can sit on a bike and that won't bother you at all. But if it bothers you, do not continue. You can wait a week and then try it again. Number three, when you're out of the gym for any extended period of time, now at this you're gonna be at least four to six weeks, at least, and we're talking minimum, and that's getting maybe back on an assault bike at that point, but you're not gonna be able to do much four to six weeks out. Four to six weeks is enough for your core to start to break. That being said, when the doctor says that you can squat, like do like light back squats or whatever, your core is not going to be engaged the way it was before your surgery. So you have to go light. I hurt myself thinking that I could do body weight back squats when the doctor said I could do back squats. It's, it's not okay. So, and then that put my recovery back even further. So you need to be incredibly smart when you're returning. Now this doesn't just go for breast augmentation. This goes for any procedure that you ever have done. But you need to listen to your body. You need to be smart when you're returning. Anything arm related is going to take even longer. Um, and anything hanging from a pull-up bar, that position and opening up um, your pectoral muscles and your shoulders, because everything is, you know, you're, you're tight. Everything's tight. That's what she said. And it should be, because you just, this is what you paid money for. It's gonna take a while for you to do even just a strict pull-up again. I got on a band and when I would wait until the gym was dark and closed and I would put a band on the pull-up rig and just start doing strict banded pull-ups. And it started off with, can I even extend my arms fully? And it was a very, very slow process. And it was almost comical to watch a regionals level athlete do banded pull-ups or banded hangs because I couldn't even hang from the bar. It's, uh, it's a very humbling procedure and if you can um, make yourself okay with taking a step back from fitness, then power to you and I do highly recommend it because it does make a difference. It does make you feel, it made me feel complete. Um, I don't think that body image and feeling good about you know the person that you are, what you look like, I don't think that's shallow. I think that there's something very special about feeling good about yourself and if there's a little step that you want to take to do that, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Making yourself happy shouldn't be, you shouldn't be put at fault for that. So that brings me to kind of my next point. Would I do it again and why? Yes. The next, the second time I got it done, I didn't get a lift and I probably should have because I didn't want the recovery time. You're spending your money, so make the right decision and figure out exactly what you want. And if the timing is wrong, I would advise you to wait until the timing is right and you can get done what you want done. 
Never settle. Especially when it comes to your body. This is your body. This is what you've built. Make the right decision. Do your homework. Study. I did like, I think I went to seven consultations before I found the doctor that I really liked. And there were two that I really, really liked. So it really came down to timing at that point. But do your homework. It pays to do your homework. And ask questions. And if I can give you any advice, ask people that have had their boobs done don't mind talking about it it's something that made them feel confident it's very rare that you'll find somebody that says oh my god don't talk to me i don't i don't want to i don't want anybody to know you know it's very rare that anybody that has had their boobs done gets like that most people don't mind talking about it don't mind answering questions it's it's a very empower it's like lifting it's a very empowering thing i you feel you can see the confidence coming off of somebody, and usually when somebody exudes confidence, they don't mind talking about why they're so confident. It's They kind of go hand in hand. So don't be afraid to ask a question. I just, I'm just i saying that because one of my athletes was so nervous to ask me about it. And I said, ask me whatever questions you want. And the XYZ girls that are at the gym that have also had breast augmentation done, I said, don't be afraid to ask them either because they feel the same way. They don't mind talking about it. And everybody has the same questions. So if you have any additional questions, comment below. I'll be happy to ask, answer them for you. Or you can DM me on Instagram at kgramsfb. If you think that there's something that I missed that maybe would constitute a whole nother video, let me know. I would be happy to answer, like I said, any questions. I'm one of those people. I don't mind talking about it. So like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and I hope that I answered any questions and concerns that you may have had. Thanks, guys. Bye.